Hi everyone, I'm James, the box office artist, and welcome to our 10,000 subscriber special. I am here on Facebook Live uh, with all these fine people here. Okay, so today, today, uh, out of the suggestion of uh, the, uh, the fine uh, people here on Facebook Live, uh, we are going to do an interesting one today. We are going to do Image Comics The Max by Sam Keith. We're going to draw him versus DC Comics. Uh, Killer Croc. Okay, so that's gonna be a fun one. It's gonna be a fun one. It's a lot of muscles, a lot of scale, a lot of weirdness, all together in one for this question and answer live uh, celebration here. Okay, so I'm gonna actually get started here, and uh, I'm gonna actually start roughing things out. So let's uh, get to the first question, guys. Okay, and the first question. First of all, I don't know how to pronounce uh, this guy's name. He's asking, "Hey, I love your content. Just subscribed, and I would like to know what do you work in, and if there's any memorable things you worked on." I'm thinking you work in DC Comics. I started working in comics in the year 2000 uh, for a company called Dreamwave, and I, w I worked as a professional comic book artist. Uh, full time until uh, summer 2006. That's when I decided to go into film. So I went back to school. 2006, 2007. I took, I took animation. I took animation at a school called Sheridan College, and then I got my first uh, gig uh, in film as a 3D modeler. So I, I started out as a modeler. Uh, I started as a modeler in uh, my first job was in Vancouver. I worked for MGM in Vancouver. So <laughs> after working in film uh, since 2006, and I worked out a bunch of titles, uh, and I, I will be explaining my entire work timeline probably in a separate video. So I won't get into it too deeply, but uh, but I've worked on a whole bunch of films. I worked on Watchmen. I worked on Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief. I worked on uh, Invictus. I worked on Battle LA. I actually worked on Furious Seven, and I uh, I did a, I did some working on uh, Fantastic Four. That was until June this year, and that's when I quit my job. Uh, June this year. Why did I quit my job? Number one, for a few reasons. One, because I am turning. Uh, 40 very soon in two years I'm turning 40 in, and, and I've said this before in previous video but just to reiterate I'm turning 40 in a couple years and there's some things I want to accomplish and uh, some you know my business I wanted to start and see if I can make it in my business I have some IP that I'm developing on my own and I want to see if I can make it so that's why that's uh, why I quit my job and I gave myself a two-year timeline so I'm month two of that two-year timeline uh, I'm a little bit behind but we'll, we'll see, if in two years, by the time I'm 40, if things are going great, or if things look like they're working out, I'll keep going. But I do have a family, so if things just don't look like they're working, you know, like honestly, you should like keep at it. Maybe seven years you could keep at it, even if it's not working, but I have a family to consider. Uh, I have kids that will probably go into college, so uh, you know, I can't do that forever. So if it's not just not working, I'll go back into film. That's the plan, so. What are the memorable things I worked on? Uh, well, of course, my very first comic gig, uh, that was on, uh, well, full comic gig, that was Dark Minds Witchblade for Top Cow. Uh, I was a background artist, but that was actually some of my favorite background work, was doing that. Transformers Armada, for, uh, number one, for Dreamwave Productions. That is what, like, my very first ongoing series. That's very memorable. Uh, working on Wonder Woman, where I actually got to draw the JLA, that's memorable for different reasons. <laughs> a lot of different reasons. I can't wait to tell you guys that story. And ooh, that's a doozy of a story. Uh, when I worked on Wonder Woman for uh, DC Comics a long time ago. Um, and uh, film-wise, uh, Watchmen, that was an experience. Uh, mainly, I had a fantastic experience because I wasn't very good and they were very patient with me. So I will actually go into that too. Uh, either in my throwback series or Ask the Artist series, I'll go into that, so. So yeah, those were the memorable ones, for sure, okay? Uh, Wakaseta, uh, he asks, uh, would messing with a 3D model in a program or using one of those little drawing mannequins help with posing as well, or are those things considered no-nos? Like, I know people who would say, I know people who would say, um, that, uh, you know, look, looking at reference at all is bad. <laughs> and if they think that way, you know, that's, that's, 
what they're thinking, but for me, I, I don't feel that way at all. All great artists use references. Um, a lot of great artists use photographic references, like two of my favorite painters, Alex Ross and uh, the, the great uh, poster painter. Um, oh, so, sorry guys, my, my mind is drawing a blank here. Uh, the Star Wars poster, Drew Struzan. Drew Struzan, uh, they, they set up photo shoots. They know exactly what their painting is going to look like before they actually go into painting. Um, so, uh, like for me, there's absolutely nothing wrong with actually having a 3D model and, and using that to make poses. Uh, I told people, especially starting out to get poses, why don't you just grab, grab your cell phone and take pictures of yourself or your friends and try to put them in that pose and then try to draw them posing. Nothing wrong with working from reference at all. Because uh, even the most professional artists out there, they, they, they use them. They use them. And they help, you know. The more you know how to draw things real, no matter how cartoony your style is, the better your, your, your work is going to get because they will feel re uh, real no matter how cartoony your, um, your drawing style is. So. so that's my answer. Yes, nothing wrong with those. You should, you should do them. If you have those resources, go do them for sure. Okay, next question, um, Evan Michael Harden asks, Evan Michael Harden asks, I love your art style. You definitely don't see a lot of artists using that much black. Do you co co constantly get a lot of grief from collaborators like Colorist about adding too much black? If so, how do you respond? The answer is yes, yes, <laughs> a lot, a lot. Um, and that all started back in my Dreamwave days when I was in Dreamwave. And they were talking about early 2000s. They were already complaining because colorists want control. You know, they want to do their own thing. They're artists. They're artists too. They're you know, it's like they're people too. They're artists too. They want to add their own spin. The moment I add black to something, or add that, they uh, the, I'm controlling the lighting now, and they have no control over that. So, I, I do get complaints a lot. And uh, even when I was working, like especially working at places like Udon, and um, like they were. They once went to me, hey James, I got great news. You don't have to put so much black. Uh, they, you, know, you don't have to do the black anymore. I'm like, that's not good news for me. <laughs> so it's just the style. I just like the control of uh, the light source. And that's the ultimate control when I, when I put those blacks in. So I, I, I really love that control. Uh, so it, that does bog down the colors for sure. So a lot of them don't like coloring my work just be because of that. And even when I was doing uh, Dark Cybertron, Dark Cybertron, uh, a lot of the fans didn't like that. They didn't like because they weren't used to my style. You know, they were used to an Alex Milne style or or a uh, Casey Collar style or, or the uh, recent Transformers artist style because mine is like completely 180 from theirs, completely different. And I was splitting the book with somebody else, so my style actually didn't really match uh, theirs. Like mine was so different than theirs. So. Uh, on my last live stream, I talked about uh, it talked I talked about um, my influences and my biggest influences are I'll just mention them quickly again. Uh, my biggest influences are Stephen Platt, um, Stephen Platt, uh, Travis Charest, and David Finch. Those those three are my style wise. They are my biggest in inspirations. Even when it comes to drawing robots, I actually got draw inspirations from them. The way David Finch drew Sentinels in the X-Men, I thought that was fantastic. Uh, the way uh, Stephen Platt did his armor in Soul Saga, when he was doing Soul Saga, that was one of my biggest inspirations. And when um, Travis Charest, he did one issue of Wildcats, I think it was the Wildcats number one, where he drew this mecha tank. He drew this mecha tank, and I thought it was amazing. This mecha tank, and that's where I actually got the inspiration to do all these rivets on all my robots. It was from that. I saw him put those rivets there, and I thought they looked fantastic. That's why I keep doing that to this day. Now, colorists hate uh, coloring those things, too. So.
That's actually related to another question I got from Dave Evans asking what's the tip to prevent smudging in your artwork. The good part about um, uh, Sharpies is they do dry quickly so after I lay them down if I were to go over them with my hand uh, no problem. No problem it won't uh, smudge as much. Um, when I was in China I had uh, all these, uh, I think I mentioned this yesterday, I had all, er, I had these prints and a lot of them, they wanted me to draw on the back of their print. I'm like, why would you want, to draw, want me to draw on the back of a print? That makes no sense to me. Uh, but the, apparently they have these frames that are two-way frames and they actually hang them up like in the middle so you can actually see both sides. I'm like, oh, okay. Okay, that's the case. I had someone explain that to me. Um, but there, that, that, that's glossy paper. Like trying to draw on glossy paper is crazy. It's really tough. So, uh, one thing I like to do, when it, just so I won't smudge, I'll work left to right. Kind of like what I'm doing here. I will work left to right. I'll keep blowing on the paper sometimes if I know it's a very smudgeable surface. Uh, this one here is not too bad. This one here is not too bad. So, I'm not too worried about this, about this paper surface, my regular Bristol board surface. It's not too bad. This guy looks like a character from World of Warcraft. Now I'm looking at it. But, um, so that helps a lot for sure. But in terms of Sharpies, if they wanted something, um, if you want uh, something, here's the deal with Sharpies. And even Microns, like at the end of the day, these are markers. These are markers at the end of the day. So over time, like right now they're okay. Over time, this will fade. Like a lot of this ink will fade. and They won't be black, black. Um, the only way you're going to get black black that kind of lasts forever is if you use something with uh, permanent ink or uh, India ink type thing. So if you want to do something like that and you're willing to spend a few extra dollars, uh, you should uh, give a try to repeatograph pens. I use those in college and they're what uh, a lot of technical illustrators use is repeatograph pens. And uh, there's tricks to clean them. Uh, and they're kind of hard to clean, but it, it, it is very worth it. That, you know, but it is very expensive, too, at the same time. So. And there is the the finished drawing. Pitt versus Killer Croc protecting Julie. Okay. <laughs> yes, that's true. I am planning on giving this guy away. Uh, the way to win this piece, first of all, like a lot of you already are, you gotta be subscribed to my channel. I would like you to share this 10,000 subscriber video on uh, whatever social networks that you have. I also want you to follow me on Twitter, on Facebook, and um, 
Yeah, and Twitter and on Facebook and on Instagram. Okay, Snapchat if you want to, but those three: Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and uh, and subscribe to me, and just let me know that you've done all those things. Okay, and that I will randomly pick a winner, uh, and the winner I will send you this piece wherever you are in the world. I will send this to you as a thank you for 10,000 subscribers. Okay. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate, again, all of you guys for subscribing. It means so much to me. And I hope, I hope uh, you'll stay interested in my videos. I appreciate every single comment, even the bad ones that you leave. I take all of them to heart. Any critiques you have about my videos, any critiques you have about my artwork, I would love to hear them. And thank you all for the support. It means a lot to me. Please continue to follow me on social media, Snapchat, Instagram, um, Twitter at Box Office Artist. Follow me on Facebook at The Box Office Artist. And if you haven't already, but I think a lot of you are, please continue to subscribe to this channel. And thank you once again. Really appreciate it. It means a lot to me. My name is James. I'm The Box Office Artist, and I'm here to say, keep drawing. <laughs>